Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. And friends, today I'm going to talk about HIV, uh, dual CAR T therapy that's being uh, conducted by UC Davis Health researchers. Um, I think I had done this before. I don't remember when. I have a vague recollection that I have covered this therapy before, but I thought, why not take a look at what's happening at this point of time if any new information is available. So in this video, I'm going to describe what this uh, therapy is all about and uh, how they are conducting the trials. Uh, I'll give you the estimated date of completion of this um, particular research, preliminary date of completion. Uh, I'll provide you the um, NCLT reference number so you can go to clinicaltrials.org and look at the record by yourself. Uh, and um, what else? So that's what I have for you today. Uh, with that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. Um, the UC uh, Davis Health researchers are conducting a clinical trial using uh, CAR T cells to cure HIV. To be precise, they are using dual CAR T's and I recollect co having covered this earlier but it has been a while so I decided to take, up, uh, take a second look at the study. The study is designed in a phase 1 slash 2a uh, clinical trial. And uh, phase one is typically focused on assessing the safety of a treatment and phase two uh, involves evaluating both safety and preliminary efficacy. I checked on the latest status in the, uh, in, uh, the clinicaltrials.gov database. Uh, you can also check it out yourself um, using the identifier NCT0464846 on clinicaltrials.gov website. The last update on this record was made on 30th of May 2023. So whatever I'm telling you is not like hot off the press or anything. It is something that um, has been there since the 30th of May. There has been no updates after that. Even though they might have made progress, uh, it has not been updated. Uh, preliminary study completion is expected at the end of 2026, exactly on 31st December 2026, uh, which means that they could bring it either a little before that or maybe uh, in the first um, month of uh, 2027, it's um, a little bit of regal room should be given there. Participants in the study will be individuals uh, with HIV infection and I think it is HIV 1 uh, which is the strain uh, which is most prevalent. I mean 95% of people suffer from HIV 1. Very few are with HIV 2. So I assume that it's going to be HIV 1. And the intervention involves the use of autologous T cells these T cells are modified to express LVGP120 duo car molecules. Uh, as explained earlier, this likely means that T cells are engineered to express chimeric antigen receptors targeting the GP120 glycoprotein on the surface of HIV viruses. The study will use a 3 plus 3 design for dose escalation. This means participants will be enrolled sequentially in cohorts and the dose of the autologous T cells expressing LVGP120 duocar molecules will be escalated in groups of three until the maximum tolerated dose uh, is reached. Uh, I will show you the table of dosing later. Now, I would just like to explain what I think LVGP120 duocar means. It indicates to me LV uh, likely stands for lentiviral, uh, which means they must have used a lentiviral vector uh, to introduce the chimeric antigen receptor. Uh, and um, if you look at GP120, I think it's a glycoprotein on the surface of the HIV virus, which is what uh, these cars are supposed to target. Duocar suggests that there are two chimeric antigen receptors. Uh, cars are synthetic receptors that can be added to T cells to enhance their ability to recognize and attack specific targets such as infected cells. Those of you who follow our uh, genomic uh, investment um, videos, uh, you know that we have been talking about CAR T cell therapy for quite a while uh, about how you have to identify an antigen and program a, 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 a chimeric antigen receptor and include that in a T cell, CD4 T cell, so that it can uh, track the antigen. And typically these antigens are unique to cancers. So that's how we explain that in the genomic side. This is similar. Uh, and here the target antigen is the GP120 or uh, glycoprotein 120. And uh, a safety evaluation period of 45 days will be used to assess the safety of the treatment at a given dose level. 
This period likely involves monitoring participants for any adverse events or side events or side effects related to the intervention and dose escalation decisions will be made based on the safety evaluation results after a minimum of three participants have completed 45 day safety evaluation period at a specific dose level. If participants experience uh, dose limiting adverse events or uh, what could be called as significant side effects uh, during the safety evaluation period, no further escalation will occur at that dose level. It will be terminated out there. Participants who experience dose limiting adverse events will reinstate uh, ART at the first available opportunity and this will be a precautionary measure to manage the HIV infection in case the modified T cells, the duo CAR T cells uh, infused in them do not provide sufficient control. In summary, the study aims to assess the safety and potentially the efficacy of autologous T cells expressing LVGP120 duo CAR molecules in individuals with HIV infection through a systematic dose escalation approach. The design incorporates safety evaluation, dose escalation decisions and measures to manage adverse events to ensure the well-being of the participants. Before I show you the dosage chart, let me explain non-ablative conditioning which is what they use in this study. Non-ablative conditioning refers to a type of pre-transplant treatment regimen used in hematopoietic uh, stem cells uh, transplantation or HSCT or bone marrow transplantation. Unlike ablative or myeloablative conditioning which involves high dose chemotherapy, chemi uh, chemotherapy or uh, radiation to eliminate the patient's existing bone marrow completely so that the new, uh, uh, new uh, modified uh, stem cells can go and uh, establish themselves. We have non-ablative conditioning which uses lower doses that are generally well tolerated. The goal with non-ablative conditioning is to suppress the recipient's immune system enough to allow the acceptance of transplanted donor cells without completely eliminating the patient's own bone marrow. This is a gentler approach. Here is the dosing chart. I'm going to take you to the website uh, of uh, UC Davis to show you the uh, dosing chart. So here you see in this paragraph, each uh, cohort will receive different treatment and dosing. Uh, cohort A, uh, cohort 1 will receive a single dose of 3 into 10 raised to 5 cells per kg LVGP120 duo CAR T cells which will be infused and antiretroviral therapy will be stopped immediately after infusion to allow the CAR T to get introduced to the HIV virus and start working on it. The cohort 2 will undergo, undergo a non-ablative conditioning with uh, uh, with a, uh, a non-ablative conditioning agent and a single dose of uh, 3 into 10 raised to 5 cells uh, per kg of LVGP120 duo CAR T cells will be infused and ART will be stopped immediately after uh, infusion. And for cohort 3, participants will un undergo non-ablative conditioning uh, and a single dose of 1 into 10 raised to 6 cells per kg uh, LVGP120 duo CAR T cells will be infused into the participants and ART will be stopped immediately after uh, infusion. So dose escalation decision as I said will be made when a, with, when a minimum of three participants have completed the safety evaluation period which is 45 days at a given dose level and the participants who have dose limiting adverse events will uh, reinstate ART therapy at the first available opportunity in order to protect their CD4 T cells assuming that the infused uh, dual CAR T cells are not giving adequate coverage. So that's how uh, they are going to do their uh, trials, uh, the dosing, uh, dosing escalation plan. And here is the uh, clinicaltrials.gov record for this particular study. And uh, the study identifier is NCT0464804046 as I mentioned before. And uh, this is from University of California, San Francisco, Stephen Deeks. Uh, in fact, I had put a uh, photograph of Stephen Deeks in my earlier video. Uh, just to give a face to the whole uh, research out here. And the study overview here you can see that it says the last update was 30th May 2023. And the study preliminary completion date estimated is going to be around 31st of December 2026. I would say give or take a month. And study completion uh, estimated is 31st December 2027. And friends, I have been talking about EBT 101 and AGT 103-T. Everywhere I'm giving you a ballpark of 2027. I'm feeling more and more it's likely that in 2027, we, are, we might get one or more uh, uh, approved therapies. 
So this, uh, this is what we have here. And in my opinion, one of the reasons why um, this particular therapy could succeed uh, is because um, uh, GP120 is a very, very critical component of the virus. It is so critical that it is the least mutated part of HIV virus. HIV virus mutates very rapidly, but the GP120 uh, area is generally pristine. It's like, because that's what is needed uh, to latch on to the CCR5 and CD4 uh, receptors uh, and uh, unload the uh, RNA into the uh, CD4 T cell. So if uh, any uh, copy of the virus has got defective GP120, uh, that li lineage will terminate. It will not propagate any further. So only uh, HIV viruses which have got intact GP120 will continue to propagate. So this CAR T uh, can 100% latch on to the target. The only thing I feel um, that they probably need to do is, uh, given that they are sending the CAR T in search of HIV, uh, we know the fact that uh, HIV is always in search of CD4 receptor on a CD4 T cell so that it can infect it. The, the main concern I have is that the CCR5 has to be neutralized or else um, uh, the HIV might infect the CAR T cell before the CAR T cell can uh, damage the HIV. So that is, a, that is one possibility I can think based on whatever I have read so far. Friends, you know that I'm not a scientist or a doctor and I don't mean to, um, uh, to say that this uh, study is not going to succeed or anything. But all I'm saying is that if a CD4 T cell is going to be anywhere close to a HIV-1 uh, virus, then at the very least the CCR5 receptor has to be shielded uh, so that um, the cell doesn't get in, uh, infected by uh, HIV. But on the other hand, if you look at it this way, if the chimeric antigen receptors go and latch on to GP120, then GP120 won't be able to interact with the CD4 uh, receptor or with CCR5. So I think that's what is most likely to happen. Uh, we'll find out more as the study progresses further. Again, the ballpark is 2027 uh, by which it, this will all be completed. So I'm optimistic about this as well. And uh, friends, I understand that some of you are, um, are a bit desperate at this point of time after four decades of waiting and some with just uh, a few years of waiting. Uh, I can understand that when I get the common flu or when I get uh, uh, upset stomach or something, I feel terrible and I feel that I would like that thing to go away and I want to be as normal as possible as soon as possible. So I understand where you're coming from, but as a content provider who is not a scientist and who is not doing active research, the only thing I can provide you is updates whatever is available. Uh, I cannot tell you that a cure will be available tomorrow. However much you keep on asking, when is it coming? When do you expect a cure to come? Is it going to be sterilizing cure? Is it going to be functional cure? I don't have answers for those questions. All I can say is that a ballpark is 2027 by which I expect we'll have at least one cure in place and maybe more. Uh, so that's what I would like to say. Uh, and um, there is a reason why the HIV virus has not been conquered so far. That is because it's a retrovirus. It sits in our DNA. And before we had DNA modifying tools like CRISPR and base editing and prime editing, um, we were using uh, molecules to subdue various aspects of the HIV life cycle and uh, thus control it. And HIV is still so powerful that if you use a monotherapy, it becomes immune to the monotherapy by mutating. So ART is a combination ART consisting of multiple therapies which act at different stages of the HIV life cycle and they're all uh, put in concert together into the body so that you can have some control over HIV. So the virus is that insidious and therefore uh, I think that now is the golden uh, period for a lot of uh, genetic diseases to be taken care of even though HIV is not a genetic disease but we have genetic tools genetic editing tools like uh, CRISPR-Cas9, base editing and prime editing. And I think prime editing is a very, very strong tool. And if somebody deployed it on HIV, I think it's coming very soon. Somebody will deploy it on HIV and prime editing has the capability of rearranging nucleotides for a given section of the GP120 protein. 
So if the scientists were to identify which part of uh, GP120 has to be damaged in order to make it totally unviable, uh, then I suppose uh, a prime editing solution will probably bring the ultimate uh, relief because once it is uh, put on patients and once the GP120 is shut down, HIV will not propagate anymore and the next generation of humans will not have any trace of HIV. And then we'll have to tackle it on uh, animals uh, like uh, I think uh, cats have feline HIV and then we have monkeys with simian uh, immunovirus. So we'll have to take those also out so that by any chance it doesn't cross across species and come back into humans. And even if it did, the GP120 uh, targeting prime, uh, prime edited therapy is most likely to uh, subdue it once again because it will go right at the heart of it. GP120 uh, is uh, the least mutating part of the virus. So I think uh, that's what uh, will probably save us. And when I talk about uh, prime editing, I think that it will be more like uh, uh, shock a cell into uh, getting active instead of being latent and there go and um, uh, rearrange the nucleotides on the GAG protein because the GAG protein is the most important component of HIV. So once the GAG protein is made invalid, I think everything will be fine. So that's what I can imagine as a potential treatment. And there's already a company called uh, Prime Medicine, which uh, gives out uh, the rights for uh, prime editing. Uh, so it's about a matter of time before some research company or the other takes those rights and starts working on HIV, targeting the GAG protein on the human genome, on the HIV genome, which is embedded into the human DNA. And um, we would not even have to do double strand breaks. So friends, that's uh, the hope I can uh, offer you. And um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll catch up with you again next week. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now. And before you go, if possible, please become a Patreon of the channel. Uh, and the link for the Patreon is in the description below. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.